global prohibition of cannabis is failing. Countries that embrace legal regulation find themselves in breach of international law because of three UN treaties. So how do we solve this problem? Fortunately, there is a way for two or more countries to agree to modify a specific treaty between themselves alone, a procedure called inter se modification. Let's say Uruguay, the Netherlands and Canada come together to initiate an inter se modification agreement that deals with issues such as how cannabis cultivation shall take place, how international trade in cannabis should be conducted, education and public health policies, and many more. These three countries would basically create a mini treaty of their own while at the same time respecting the rights and obligations of all state parties that do adhere to the UN Drug Control Conventions. If other countries wish to legally regulate cannabis after this mini treaty is agreed upon, they are free to join the group and enjoy the benefits accordingly. Why is reform at the UN level so necessary and so timely? The UN drug control regime is the reason cannabis became prohibited in the first place. International conventions, no matter how outdated, are legally binding. Continuing the practices of cherry picking will simply undermine international law in general. It is better to explore than to ignore. Cannabis farmers in traditional producing countries are at serious risk of being pushed out by commercial companies trying to capture the market. A space for small farmers needs to be protected in the emerging licit industry. Unlike in the negotiation period prior to the 1961 single convention, civil society actors can now be involved in designing policies related to cannabis. This will greatly benefit decades-long marginalized populations such as subsistence farmers as well as people who use drugs.